Okay, let's take a look at the next retouching tool below the healing brush tool. So I'm going to click on the healing brush tool and we're going to select the patch tool. Now we used this earlier in another exercise and let's see if we can use this one to correct that area on the shirt that we weren't able to use the healing brush tools with. So I'm going to select the area that I want to correct and now I'm going to click and drag to pull up another part of the shirt to go in that area. And that actually looks better because I have this dark area above from the shadow of the shirt and it just kind of extends down a little bit. Okay, let's go ahead and maybe go up to my dad's cheek. Let's try the patch tool on the area of his cheek. I'm going to make a selection and then I'm going to click and drag from the selection out to the other part of his face where we don't see any damage. And you can see I'm checking different parts of the face to see which ones may work better in that area. And unfortunately, the other side of his face that would be symmetrical or similar to it automatically isn't really visible and the shading's different on that side. So let's see what happens when I select his cheek to replace the area below. And let me do a Command D to remove it. And we can see that's actually a pretty good job. We do see maybe a little bit of the area that I selected in creating that selection and creating that patch. So let's go ahead and maybe grab another tool to kind of blend that area that we patched. So if we go ahead and look at the blur tool, which looks like a raindrop, I'm going to click and hold on the blur tool. And you can see we have the blur tool, the sharpen tool, and a smudge tool. The blur tool will soften any hard edges in an image. The sharpen tool will sharpen any edge in an image that's soft, and the smudge tool will smudge the area that we select. So let's go ahead and start with the blur tool and let's go along that edge that we created with the selection with the patch tool and see if we can't smudge out the edges of that to show that it's not such a distinct correction. And we can even come in here where we see maybe the image is a little pixelated or there might be dust on the image. And let's go ahead and I'm going to compare this to the image behind to see if I like the correction. And let's go to 100%. And I actually don't like that because it looks like he's swollen in his face and it looks like a bruise to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open up my history panel to show you that when we started, a snapshot was created of the picture automatically when it was first opened. And you can see that it's named Scan1JPEG, which was the original scan. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my history brush, which is below the brush, and it's got a little arrow coming around it. It's kind of like an undo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint back this area of my dad's face that we tried to correct and we weren't very successful. It wound up looking more like a bruise. And as I paint, you'll notice, let me go ahead and do my visibility icon again you'll notice that it brought back the damage that was on his cheek in the photograph it brought it all back and as I'm hiding my scan one layer you'll notice I see my original layer my background layer I can see the areas that I've already made corrections to and you can see that we actually have done a pretty good job so far so let's see what we can do to correct this area on my dad's face with one of the other tools perhaps that we've already used let's go back and grab the spot healing brush tool and let's try content aware to start with and I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger to cover the area and I'm gonna click that brush and again we can obviously see our corrections that we're making and it's not looking very good so I'm gonna grab my history brush tool again I'm gonna undo what I've just done and as you can see, this is all trial and error as you're trying to fix these things and trying to find the correct tool that will do the best job. And you've noticed that we've used different settings on each of these different tools and we've seen the same tool doesn't work on every instance and the settings may have to change. So let's try proximity match on this one. And now as I'm clicking, it seems the proximity match 
with the spot healing brush tool, it's actually doing the best job. Oops, went a little too far there. And now we can see that's actually doing a good job. Let me go ahead and hide my scan one layer again to see my corrections. And you can see we actually had to go back to our spot healing brush tool to try that one on this area and that was probably our best choice using the proximity match option. So let's go ahead and move up here to his eye and proximity match is working well. Whoops, too far into the side there. Not so much on that one. Let's try content aware. Nope, can see the brush on that one. Let's just try a different size. Okay, you can see that we will be swapping tools as we work through this image to make any corrections. Let me go ahead and zoom in on his eye. And we can see there's some sort of damage under his eyebrow. And we want to clean that up. So let's again try our spot healing brush and see how well that does first. And do that. Let's make a smaller brush. And what's neat about this is you can start making your corrections. Here I am making them along the edge. And as I move up, let me try content aware. As I move my mouse up into his eyebrow where there's some issues, you'll notice that if I'm starting from the bottom, I've actually created more areas to sample from that I haven't already been corrected and now can be reused when creating the new sample. So once you've created an area of your photo, you can use an area that you've already corrected to help make the next correction. Let me go ahead and go back to my zoom. Let's go ahead and zoom out. And we can see that's looking a little better, but I could probably still clean up some of that eyebrow. Now let's take a look at the bottom part of the photo where we have this issue with the t-shirt. Let's go ahead and check out the clone stamp tool. The clone stamp tool is similar to the healing brush tool in the fact that we have to create a sample. And again, we can choose all layers or we can choose just the current layer. Since we're working on the same layer with our corrections, I'm going to choose current layer. And I'm going to make a larger brush, perhaps. And you can see it's already kind of calling up a sample of some sort. And I'm going to create a sample in this area. And I'm going to see if I can correct the damage on his shirt down here. Now, what's happening with this tool is it's essentially creating a clone of another area. So it's going to duplicate a pre-selected sample of an image. So we hold on our Alt key or Option key. Again, our mouse changes to the crosshairs, and then we would click and create our sample, just like we did with the Healing Brush tool. And then it's going to take that sample and put it in the new area. So let's go ahead, and in this case, we're going to actually have to consider these lines in the folds in the t-shirt. So maybe starting up here, we can come down and follow the fold and replace what's inside the brush area again with that plus sign that we created. So you'll notice that the sample of the image, let me try that again, the sample of the image is at the plus sign and as I'm moving it down you can see how the plus sign is following the brush which is the area that's going to be corrected. So as I'm working down, it's taking areas that I've already corrected and now using that to make the next correction. Let me make a smaller brush. Again, I'm going to create a sample. Alt click or Option click. And then I'm going to move down. And we can see a preview inside the circle, which is our brush. And we can see the plus sign. Whoops, that one actually was sampling inside itself and you can see where the plus sign is and that's where it's getting its sample from. Let's see. This one we may now want to go up. So I'm going to go up. Now we see the sample is below the circle. And as I click going upwards, it's replacing the contents of our circle with the area from the plus sign. So you can see how we've corrected the t-shirt and we've actually maintained the folds. So I can probably take this fold here and replace this part of this fold. So let's see if we can do that. I'm going to Alt-click or Option-click. 
and now I'm going to click and you can see all I've done here is I've duplicated the fold from down below into this new fold up here and I actually got this darker area just below the fold and it's landing in the wrong spot on that new one so let me back up just a little bit let me resample my image get a smaller sample I'm going to stay above that fold and go back up again it's taking it from where the plus sign is and you'll notice the plus sign does not always stay in the same location it's going to adjust based on the location of my brush there that's looking much better so we could actually continue this all the way through and continue to fix his t-shirt. 